What's up my friends? I'm Harv, I'm a videographer, and on this channel I make videos about videography. In this video I continue my compendium of cryptic descriptors to digitally digest on this delightful day. What am I doing? It's my audio glossary for videographers. As ever, I've timestamped everything so you can just skip to the bit you want in the timeline. And this channel now has a non-profit Patreon, of which the idea being that it's, as I mentioned, non-profit, all the funds from Patreon go back into the channel to buy equipment, and then I give the equipment away to you guys, to my backers, once they've been reviewed. So if this video helps you and you want to support the channel and be in with a chance of winning some gear, do check it out, it's linked below. It's inexpensive to be a backer, just the cost of a cup of coffee. So in no particular order, first up, DB. And I know that you know that DB means decibels, but there are a couple of things that are quite interesting about decibels. Firstly, when recording audio, they're displayed as negative decibels. In fact, the maximum volume in digital recording is zero dB, and all the rest of it, all the fluctuations in volume are displayed as negative decibels. If you go higher than zero dB, you'll actually get clipping, and no one wants that. Secondly, for every six decibels increased in volume, our ears perceive that as the volume doubling. And the same goes for if you decrease the volume by six decibels, we perceive that as the volume halving. The reason for that is because decibels are on a logarithmic scale rather than a linear one. So I feel like that's some really good real world context for setting audio levels in your camera. To add to that, you may also see sometimes dBA, and what that means is it's a weighted version of decibels. And what I mean by weighted is that it puts more value on frequencies that are within the human hearing range. For example, if you were to record someone shouting, that would measure higher in dBA than dB. And the reason I mentioned dBA is because I'm going to talk about it in just, just a bit, and I thought it would be um, just good for you to know in advance. So dBA, it's potentially not as accurate as dB, but arguably more relevant. Next we have KHZ, or kilohertz, in the context of recording audio, and you'll often see figures around like 44.1 uh, kilohertz, 48 kilohertz, 96, 192, and these are also known as sample rates. It's actually kilohertz per second, I'm not sure why that's emitted, but needless to say, the higher the kilohertz, the higher the quality, but also the higher file sizes, so. So those numbers mentioned indicate how many times per second your audio is being sampled. For example, 44.1 kilohertz means your audio has been sampled 44,100 times per second. So yeah, the higher the better. Now this could be subject for another video, but personally I find, you know, the lower ones, 44.1, 48 kilohertz, which is my preference, to be perfectly fine for almost every application. Next, lav. Lav mic. Ever wondered how lav or lavalier got its name? Well, we're heading back in time to 17th century France where a lavalier was actually a piece of jewellery, often with a single stone and worn as a necklace. The style was popularised by the Duchess de la Vallière, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, mistress of King Louis XIV, and the word lavalier was thought to have been named after her. Have some history. Wav or wave is short for waveform audio file and they've been around since 1991 and of course they're uncompressed and known for being way high quality than something like mp3. I know a lot of people call them WAV files as if they're an acronym for something, you know, an acronym like NASA or something like that, but as it's just a shortened version of waveform as a word, Really, it's probably more accurate to call them WAV files. MP3 stands for MPEG-1 Audio Layer 3. Catchy. And it's, it's a lossy format, very well-known lossy format, that was created by the aforementioned company MPEG, or Moving Picture Experts Group. Catchy. The history of the creation of MP3s is really quite complicated and, and convoluted. Uh, you'll find lots of different versions online, so I'm not really going to go into that. But needless to say, it would have been created around, you know, the early 90s. And I do wonder if we will see the back of MP3s 
at some point quite soon because as I mentioned they're lossy I mean they max out the maximum quality is 320 kilobytes per second so really really lossy so what about bits when recording audio you'll see 16 bit 24 bit 32 bit sometimes what does it all mean what are the differences well obviously you know the higher the better you know with each jump you'll get extra dynamic range and for me it's 16 bit 24 bit 32 bit it's good better best but as this is a video for videographers to understand these sort of things let me explain with videography context 16 bit i would liken a little to something like 8-bit video you know it's fine it's decent enough you just have to make sure that you kind of nail things uh, as you record them and you wouldn't want to sort of tweak them too much 24-bit is more like something like 10-bit video it gives you definitely a, a big leap in terms of dynamic range and um it's yeah it's a it's a noticeable step up in quality 32-bit however is another massive leap it's more like going from 10-bit video to raw it's um it's amazing spl or sound pressure level is a very complex thing to explain i can't i mean here's the equation to work it out to work out spl yeah but this is essentially just another means of communicating volume based on air movement after all sound is just wiggly air that just hits our eardrums and then we perceive it man i should have been a physicist You'll see SPL most commonly on microphone specs uh, to indicate the volume that they can take before they explode. And honestly, I implore you not to pay much attention to these because often they're rated to far more than you'll ever need to record. For example, the Rode NTG4 Plus has a SPL rating of 135 decibels. And for some context, 120 dBA, you remember dBA, is the volume that we perceive of heavy machinery, so really loud. 130 dBA is the volume of a jet plane taking off. 140 is the pain threshold. Anyway, that's it for now. You know, I love doing these kind of glossary videos. They're such, um, they're such fun. I love finding all the little facts about them. But the question of the day for you is this. What did I miss? Definitely let me know. Pop them in the, in the comment section and we can load up another kind of uh, little treasure trove of uh, knowledge down there. And maybe I can do a part two of this. Let me know. Anyway, I've now filmed hundreds of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube has recommended this video for you to watch next, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Thank you.